Hello, and welcome to the Computing Conversations column. This column is from the February 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled, JavaScript, Designing a Language in 10 Days. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I am the editor of the column, and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan. When Netscape hired Brendan Eich in April 1995, he was told that he had 10 days to create and produce a working prototype of a programming language that would run in Netscape's browser. Back then, the pace of web innovation was furious, with Microsoft suddenly making the Internet the focus of its Windows 95 operating system in response to Netscape's emerging browser and server products. Netscape got so much attention from Microsoft at the time because Netscape considered the web browser and server as a new form of a distributed operating system rather than just a single application. Once Mosaic debuted in 1993, the web became a portable across Windows, Macintosh, and Unix and gave software developers the hope that they could develop portable applications for all these environments at one time. But HTML wasn't sufficient by itself to define a new application development or operating system. To cement the portable operating system concept, the web and Netscape needed portable programming languages. Sun's Java seemed to be the solution for portable heavyweight applications, a compiled language that produced portable bytecode and ran in the Java virtual machine. Java supported rich object-oriented patterns adopted from C++ and seemed likely to be able to achieve similar performance, similar to C++ and C. Java was the web's answer to Microsoft's Visual C++. Knowing that Java was a rich, com complex, compiled language aimed at professional programmers, Netscape and others also wanted a lightweight, interpreted language to complement Java. This language would need to appeal to non-professional programmers, much like Microsoft's Visual Basic, and interpretable for easy embedding in web pages. According to Brendan Eich, if I had done classes in JavaScript back in those 10 days in May in 1995, I think I would have been told this is too much like Java, you're competing with Java, you know, somebody at Sun would have yelled at Bill Joy more than they did, and it might have killed the deal. So uh, I was definitely not only under time constraint, but under marketing orders, make it look like Java, but don't make it too big for its bridges. It's just this sort of silly little brother language, right, the sidekick to Java. Given all these requirements, constraints, and limitations, Ike needed to produce a working prototype on a tight schedule that would meet both Sun's needs and the Netscape 2.0 beta release schedule. Although the schedule and constraints might have been impossible for most programmers, Ike had a long history of building new programming languages, starting from his experience as a student at the University of Illinois, where he built languages just to experiment in syntax. At Silicon Graphics, he created languages that could be used to build extensions for network monitoring tools. Clearly, Building yet another language was not the hard part for Ike. The hard part was producing a rich and powerful language while being prohibited from using the object-oriented syntax reserved for Java. He wanted to embed the advanced features in JavaScript without using language syntax, so the language would initially appear simple and lightweight, and yet sophisticated programmers would be able to exploit its underlying power. Like many other languages, JavaScript took its basic syntax from the C language, including curly braces, semicolons, and reserved words. It was to be a light, friendly version of C with simpler semantics and better dynamic memory characteristics. Because a typical web page's lifetime lasted a few seconds to a few minutes, JavaScript could take a very simplified approach to concurrency and memory management. Ike built a simplified object model that combined structs from C, patterns from Smalltalk, and the symmetry between data and code offered by Lisp. The hypercart event model inspired the pattern for adding events to the HTML document. Object-oriented patterns were possible, but via runtime semantics with prototypes, as in self, instead of compiler-supported class syntax, as in Java and C++. Virtually all successful programming languages need a version 2 before they really hit their stride but we have yet to see, and will likely never see, a JavaScript 2.0. Nothing built in 10 days is perfect, but once something is released into the web, into the wild, bugs or imperfections quickly become essential features and are nearly impossible to change. According to Ike, 
JavaScript had enough good at the beginning to survive. Now, if you think back, though, to the mid-90s, JavaScript was cursed because it was mainly used for annoyances like little scrolling messages in the status bar at the bottom of your browser or flashing images or uh, things that popped up windows massively. We could have put in controls for those, and we should have. Eventually, browsers, uh, Firefox kind of championed this, led this automatic suppression of annoyances that made it all much better. And with Moore's Law compounding, and with JavaScript getting some evolutionary improvements in the standards process, it became really quite fast enough and good enough in 2004 and 5 to beget the Web 2.0 revolution. That was, I think, tied in with Firefox's retaking market share from IE and developers realizing there was a client uh, side to the programming stack that could be expressive and powerful and could be fast enough thanks to faster computers. Although the original version of JavaScript might not have been perfect, its initial adoption was for rather simple applications, so it had time to slowly evolve behind the scenes and address its early weaknesses. Moreover, because JavaScript's richness was its in, in its runtime syntax rather than in its language syntax, improving JavaScript implementations without requiring changes to the syntax of existing programs was relatively straightforward. JavaScript had been in browsers for almost a decade when the Ajax revolution started, moving JavaScript into the mainstream as an essential part of application development. Microsoft triggered Ajax's domination in web interfaces by adding the XML HTTP request feature to its Internet Explorer browser. Other browsers quickly added similar features to allow JavaScript to retrieve data from servers and update the HTML document without requiring full-page request response cycles. With this innovation, highly interactive user interface functionality moved into the browser to create increasingly rich desktop-like experiences in applications such as Google Mail and Google Maps. As the amount of code and data needed for each page increased, it exposed the weaknesses of the JavaScript runtime browser implementations. Instead of restarting the JavaScript runtime every minute or so, the same page would stay in a browser for several minutes with large dynamic in-memory data elements and nearly continuous communication with servers. Google built its own Chrome browser and the V8 JavaScript interpreter to put the browser marketplace on notice that low-performance JavaScript implementations wouldn't be tolerated. The market quickly followed suit and improved JavaScript interpreter performance across the board. Projects such as Node.js make it possible to use JavaScript as the language even for building with the web's application server elements. Because JavaScript has been event-based from the beginning, building highly scalable web applications using JavaScript without managing the complexities of multi-threading becomes quite natural. As HTML5 emerges, it's entirely possible that JavaScript will soon become a dominant programming language for both mobile and desktop applications. The evolution of, and use of JavaScript is really just getting started, which is impressive for a language developed in 10 days back in 1995. This column is from the February 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled JavaScript, Designing a Language in 10 Days. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I am the editor of the column, and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan.